Hello, my loyal fans of YouTube. I was sitting here um, sanding this bowl, which is super boring. This is a maple, spalted maple dish, actually, that I was making. And I was sanding it, and I was thinking about all the little things that I do when I'm sanding this bowl that maybe you didn't think of, and I thought I would share them. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to make sanding easier. Everybody hates sanding. Every video that you watch, they cut sanding out. Nobody wants to watch it. It's boring. I know. I'm the same as you. Hate it. But there is a few things that I do. Specifically when I'm sanding stuff on the lathe, um, when you're holding the sandpaper against that whatever that you made, dish, bowl, pepper mill, it gets hot on your fingers unless you go real slow, but the slower you go, the longer it takes, so I don't like that. So what I started doing was taking one of these little socks that my wife was, she said, do you want these in your shop? And I said, sure, why not? I don't know. I'll use them as a rag. I fold them in half and I put the sandpaper over it, just like that, and I put my fingers behind all that and it doesn't get hot. So that's a nice little tip. That's what I do. Uh, something else, go through your grits. It's super important that you don't skip grits. The point of all the different grits is every successive grit takes out the scratches from the one before it. So if you go from 80 to 220, you're going to miss, you're going to be sitting there forever with 220 trying to get the scratches out from the 80. If you go to the 120 and then the 220, you're going to have less sanding time. Uh, so go through your grits. I don't care if you start at 36. Just make sure that you follow the progression. It's never um, more than half of the grit you used before. So you're going to do 36 and then I think from there, technically you're not supposed to do more than like 50, but you go 36, 60, 80, 120, 220, 320, 400, 600, and anything after that is just getting unless you're making something that has to have like a super, super fine polish. I mean, I know that guys sand their pens till they're, you know, 20,000 grit. Have at it. <laughs> so make sure you go through your grits. Um, also, use fresh sandpaper. Don't sand your bowl and then, you know, you go to another project and you have all your sandpaper laid out and you're gonna reuse that grit. Don't do it. It's just gonna take longer. So that 80 grit that you used on the bowl already, after you use it, now it's kind of like a 120. And I know you're thinking, well, then I'll use it for a 120. No, just get a new piece. And I know sandpaper is kind of expensive, and I, I hate wasting it, but it makes such a difference when you um, have a fresh piece of sandpaper. I actually, for all my lathe sanding, I get these cutoff rolls. My local woodworking store sells, they have a bin of discount sandpaper. This is all perfectly good stuff. Um, it's just cutoffs from when they make belts or whatever. So I go down there and I get these and I just rip off pieces and rip off pieces. I use, this is what I use, that's it, a little piece. Fold it over my sock and uh, when I change grits I just throw it on the floor. Done, not using it anymore. Oh, on most lathes now, the smaller lathes, the bigger lathes, whatever, they have forward and reverse. If your lathe has forward and reverse, it's a lifesaver. The purpose of reverse is so that when you're turning, if you're cutting it out with your chisel or you're sanding it, it's always spinning in that one direction. And what that does is it mats down the fibers of the wood in that direction. Well, when you run your hand the opposite way, you can feel those fibers kind of want to lift up. So if you put it in reverse and you sand it, um, you'll lift up the fibers and you'll get that out and then go the other way and then the other way. So every time I do um, a grit, I'll go forward and then I'll go backward. And I'll use like one side of my fold I'll use for forward and the other side I'll use for backward. Or I'll use, you know, one side for the outside of the bowl, one side for the inside of the bowl, and then I'll switch and get a whole new piece of paper to do backwards. You're not using a lot. This is a very tiny amount of sandpaper. If you can't get these rolls, you could just, you know, get sheets and cut them up. Oh, the other thing is that 
like I said, I don't care if you start at 36, 80, 120. If you can start at 220, that's great. That just means that your chisels are super sharp and you're a great turner. That's not me. I start at 80 almost always. Make sure that I get out any little gouge marks that I didn't get out with the fine cutting that I do. If my tool wasn't the sharpest, then I'm going to need it. Then I, I'm not the best sharpener. But I'm a good sander. <laughs> you sand everything to 220. Start wherever you got to start. Once you get to 220, it's very, very smooth. 320 is going to make it like buttery or silky smooth. And from there on, it just gets smoother and smoother and smoother. And it starts to get glossier and glossier. Uh, I usually go to 220 at a minimum. Uh, sometimes I'll go to 400. Rarely do I go to 6. Unless I'm doing a, a pen, then I'll always go to six. Oh, in the bottom and the outside, you can do those parts with the random orbit sander. Like this piece that I have on here now, I know that I couldn't sand where this chuck is. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to use the router and hollow out the spot where the chuck was, like I did in a different video. Um, and then I'll sand it all out with the random orbit sander, and it'll be great. I'll go through the grits the same way. Uh, and I don't, you have to have a plan of how you're going to finish the back. And you always, don't take it off the lathe until you know how you're going to finish it. Because if you're going to finish this on the lathe and you take it off, then you, it's going to be wobbly, it's going to be no good. Um, so have a plan when you're doing the sanding for the bowl that how am I going to get the spot where the chuck is sanded. Uh, if you grab it with a cold chuck from the outside, great. I mean, that, that's, that works. Great, but some of these bowls, since I got this bigger lathe, I've been doing a lot bigger bowls. And I, my full jaw is not going to do 12 or 6. I think it only goes up to like 8 inches, which is, I'm doing that all the time over that. So I'll finish it with the random orbit sander or um, the router, usually a combination of the two. Um, when I have a, a lower grit sandpaper, like an 80 grit, I won't, when I'm sanding it, I'll be watching up here. Not, I don't watch where the sandpaper is. I watch up here where I can see it and I'll look for changes in um, lines that are coming around and you'll see that you can get, uh, you'll kind of see where you need to spend more time as you're sanding. So that's something else. Don't look at the sandpaper, look at you know a different point on the, usually the top part where it comes around so that you can see what's changing and what's getting manipulated and what still needs work. Um, but this bowl now was a nightmare. This is all spalted stuff, so it's uh, it's kind of soft in some spots. I, I tried turning out most of it, but uh, this has such a nice finish on it now, it almost doesn't feel like it needs, you know, all the wax and the oil and stuff that I'm going to put on it now. So, something else I wanted to mention, 80 you can shape, after that, it's all just getting the lines out from whatever the sandpaper was before. You can do a little bit with 120, but basically, if you still have shaping to do and you're on 80, don't change grips. Keep going until it's all the way it is. You don't have any little gouge marks or anything like that in there. But I just want to do a quick video, tips, tricks for sanding on the lathe. Remember, reverse is your best friend. If you have reverse, use it. It's not there just for decoration. And if you're thinking about buying a lathe, definitely get reverse. Don't, no one even think about not having reverse. Thanks, some of my knowledge. I'm sure that you guys are just riveted sitting on the edge of your sheets talking about sanding. I had a lot of time to think while I was sanding. That's what I was thinking about. Ah, whatever, that's it. I'm done. I, I, that's it.